Hey y'all, so with idle games like this, especially if you want to be free to play, you're going to have to be malleable with your teams. We don't always get to jump into building SSRs, especially if the game refuses to give us the ones we need, and in that case, it can just be way easier to settle for an SR to build. SRs are also about 50 times faster and easier to build, so without wasting too much time, let's just go over each of the SRs and I'll give them like a rating too, like a like a subjective tier list rating. Ooh. Harpy looks legit. She can put arrow on two teammates that not only does area of effect around the targets, but in increases their dodge as well. Additionally, she can reduce enemy attack speed and accuracy, making her a decent pick for a debuffer. Ganesha's pretty eye. The second skill stands out because it's like a Torn War Stomp. Short duration stun, but with a short cooldown that could potentially interrupt casts or heals. Yukiona, just a pair of socks away from being Janna. Put them piggies away, girl the fuck. Her ultimate is area of effect Blizzard, which is cool, but it's most effective on frozen enemies, and her freeze is single target. So you might want to pair her with another freezer to make sure that her ult works more better. Better. Merlin is just stop force in action, stop enemies from auto attacking, stop enemies from using skills, and he has arrow like the harpy, just single target. Pretty niche, but a necessary niche. Mulana's gonna be a boss basher. She has abilities that hit random enemies, which means there's, if there's only one enemy, she just goes dumber than hummus and bops all the tops off and rocks like a model, additionally with multi-hit abilities. Hippopolita got that arms warrior kit. She can slow enemy attack speed, and she has a battle shot that heals allies and increases their attack speed. Dracula more like Scott Bakula because he's gonna quantum leap into the S tier once we make the list. He got a Vladimir ultimate, but instead of a 5 minute cooldown, it's a 15 second cooldown. And instead of lasting only 2 seconds, it lasts near goddamn 10. Odor is actually dumb. He has a legitimate multiplier above a thousand, especially if it's just one boss. His bleed is true damage, and it's a 150% multiplier. He passively attack buffs your whole team, so definitely a decent support pick as well as a new a support nuke. Thanatos is like Virga from Rage of Destiny. He's gonna take a lot of building to get there, but once he's there, then you're there because maxing your dodge is going to make him heal himself more than any other healer. And he has death coil for insta heals and his ult just says, stop killing me because I'm no longer dying, bitch. Eos is another 1000 plus multiplier on her ult and her third skill is a shield that increases energy. I'm sure with the right setup, she would shine and not just because she's the tightness of the dawn, you know what I mean? I love Muse, currently use Muse. She has multiple multiple AoE stuns, and an AoE heal attack speed buff. Stuns fly out on the battlefield like money in a Mr. Beast video. And Baldur is a temporary tank. If you pair his passive that gives him degrading defense with the rune set that gives degrading defense, and then for the first 10 seconds of the match, you're just practically invincible to physical attacks. But watch out for those mojo tossing out spells and shit. And that's about it. Maybe if you hit a wall and you got some of these dudes stacked in your inventory, it may be worth giving them a shot. But that's gonna do it for this one. If you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord, but don't be sensitive in there because we have a bunch of different people from all sorts of different games that just like to have fun but other than that y'all that's gonna do it for me today and i'll see y'all later bye